Hi, I'm going to present a slightly different way of interacting with uh, your uh, browsing the web, rather. It's called the bubble cursor. Now, if you look at a normal cursor over here, if you can see it barely, it has a point, it has a one pixel of an activation area. You can basically click with only the top left corner of that, of that triangle at the very top. What happens if you expanded that activation area to a much larger area? That would mean you could move the, you could move the cursor less from one point to another, and you'd have to, you could be much less accurate when selecting anything you wanted to. Well, that's in fact what they do in a lot of mobile apps, for example, because if you're not accurate with your finger, they can try and see if you're touching something nearby. The problem, though, is this. If you have two things that are clickable that are right next to each other, how do you know what to click? How does the computer know what you should be clicking? That's why it's one pixel. There's a concept, though, called the bubble cursor. The activation area resizes based on nearby items. So if there's something close by, it'll, it'll click it. But if it's further, it'll resize and click it as well. Here's the tutorial. If I move my cursor near this button, you see it turns into a bubble, and I can click. Here you go. I can click links or check a checkbox. I don't have to move my mouse right over the checkbox, so you can see I can be much less accurate and still achieve my task. So that's the very basics. Now if you think about text fields, why do you have to move your mouse over a text field as well? Why do you even have to click it? Why can't I move my cursor near one and just start typing? Why can't I move my cursor down and then just start typing again? And wait, it's the wrong password. I don't have to drag and select all the text or press Control A or something like that. I just click, type again, click, type again. It's a much faster way of filling in forms because you can be so much less accurate and on top of that, you get to click less. Here's a Wikipedia page. As you can see, I can uh, just move my cursor around and it's selecting everything that's possible. Again, you'll see that it displays the title as if you were hovering over it. In the bottom left, you'll s it's a little cut off, but you'll see the URL that it would go to if you were to click. I can, of course, command click to open in a new tab, and I can pretty much use it as a normal cursor in that sense. And, of course, if I move it near a search field, straight away typing. Now that the cursor is, in a sense, inserted into the DOM, or rather shadow DOM, I can actually manipulate it a bit. So let's uh, choose some different colors, and here we go. Got a nice different style of a cursor. And as you can see, it also overrides some CSS, so the outlines on boxes and such are also changed to match your cursor. So that's the basics of a bubble cursor. You can check it out at bubblecursor.com. Thank you.